Good things come to those who wait, but better things come to those who go out and get them. I love that. How do you go out and get them? Well, here at ChartingWealth.com, you tune in every day, 10 to 15 minutes as we cover our top four charts, and then we throw in some specials for you at the end. Looks like we've got an interesting market. Stocks are mixed for the day. We see that bonds are up, gold is down, and everything else on those other charts we follow are down. Let's jump first into the S&P 500. How is this week progressing? The S&P down 0.57% for the day, but check out the chart. What do we have going on? Well, we have a green up candle, not reaching the high that it reached back on that week ending the 12th of June yet, but we see the price percent oscillator heading up derivative oscillator, which is the leading indicator continuing to lose momentum. We go to the two-day chart, not enough energy to cross over. It just can't seem to do it. We're hoping maybe for a two-day recross just won't happen. And again, we had that last two-day candle complete on Wednesday. This is the first day of the latest one. Red spinning top means indecision, tending down. I mean, again, this is not a solid red spinning top. It is basically, whenever you see an open box red candle, it means a slowdown in the up movement. Whenever you see a, a, a green, solid green candle, it means a slowdown in the down movement. Open box green candles mean strong up movement. Solid red down candles, solid red candles mean strong down movement. So what do we see here? Indecision. And we see it pulling away ever so slightly from the red signal line. If we had a big up day uh, on Friday, yes, that could cross back over. So we'll continue to watch and see. We look at the half day chart. And of course, we saw things peak. The last peak was back on Monday, the 6th of June, really just sort of devolving, sliding sideways and down since then. We can see that in the derivative oscillator and in the price percent oscillator. So that's where we are as far as the S&P 500 goes. Just not enough energy to get that two-day recross. What do we see on the Qs? We've got a big green up candle that is forming. And of course, when we look at the weekly chart, we have a, uh, we, we have a, again, price movement above that weekly trend line, price percent oscillator moving up, derivative oscillator also gaining a little bit of momentum. So the Qs is strong, up for the day 0.84%. We see things hit a higher high on the first day of the latest two-day candle, pulling away. We did have that two-day recross. That happened on Monday. And of course, things have just been ticking up higher. Derivative oscillator crossed at the same time, which is what we like to see. And we see things continuing to move up on the derivative oscillator. On that four-hour chart, look at that. Just nicely moving up, up in the morning, a little higher in the afternoon. So again, the Qs, the NASDAQ 100, just continuing to tick up with vigor. Now we're going to go to 20-year bonds. What's going on there? Still in a confirmed down move on the weekly chart, we see the price percent oscillator flat, derivative oscillator negative, losing downward momentum. We have a green spinning top that's forming, has a wick on the bottom, showing a little bit of downward pressure, but mostly that big wick on the top, up 1.59%. It was our biggest up for the day on all of our charts. Go to the two-day chart, first day of the latest two-day candle, big green up candle, price percent oscillator pulling away from the red signal line, derivative oscillator had been losing momentum, gaining momentum, first day of this latest two-day candle, half-day chart. We can see things just moving up nicely uh, up in the morning, further up in the afternoon. So doesn't look like we're going to have that two-day recross going down anytime soon. Are we going in the next week to get a crossover going up on bonds? Bonds going up, what does that tend to mean? That stocks are lagging. Now, we see the S&P lagging some, but not the NASDAQ 100, the tech stock. So interesting where things are. Some flux there. We'll wait for bonds to sort their way out. Now, gold down for the day. Now, on the weekly chart, we can see gold is up nicely. Price percent oscillator pulling ever so slightly away from the red signal line. Derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. Two-day chart, 
We haven't hit the high that we hit back on the last two-day candle for Tuesday and Wednesday, but again, it is a green up candle. Candle body's higher, but not the wick, so it's not reached a higher high. The price percent oscillator's lost a little bit of that upward momentum. Derivative oscillator continuing to move up. We look at the half-day chart. That's where we see where things peaked back on Monday morning. I'm sorry, Wednesday morning. Losing some momentum Wednesday afternoon. Same on Thursday, particularly Thursday afternoon. Still right there at the four-hour trend line above the two-day and above the weekly. So we'll see what gold does on Friday. Folks, that's where we are as we cover our first four big charts that we cover every day. And of course, we've got three more charts to go through for those who are interested. If you're students and only interested in the first big four, you are done. We appreciate you being with us. We're going to move on to Bitcoin, real estate, and oil. I always like to call it gold. Oil. Black gold. Now, we're closing out tomorrow. We have given out the invitations. Uh, we will be closing out the Accelerated Market Mastery course. If you are desperate and want to get into that course and somehow have not done so, we've got a couple of spaces that are open that we will be filling. So if you would like to talk to us about that, man, you got to get on the stick. Go ahead and email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. The course, three-month course, starts this weekend. There's a video that's attached to our daily review. Check it out on the Accelerated Market Mastery course. It's going to be three months of intensive, great training. Our, our goal is to give you about five to ten years worth of knowledge and experience that you can put to use in successful practice trades right away, leading you to creating your own virtual personal wealth fund that you're going to practice managing. See how good you can get at it. If you're interested, let us hear from you because you've almost waited too late. Now, let's keep moving. Oh, thank you for all the book orders and the Patreon members. We appreciate all that. Links in the show notes to both. The book, Charting Your Way to Wealth, second edition, autographed copies available. If you live overseas, email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. Otherwise, follow the link to square up and order it. Let's see what Bitcoin's up to down for the day, 0.8%. So as we look, and we're not going to start with the half day, we're going to start with the weekly. See the price percent oscillators about flat. Derivative oscillator, not quite negative. We have a little bitty green up candle with a little wick on top for the week. We keep waiting to see if this two day is going to cross over going up, give us a recross isn't happening. Don't know really which way it's going to go. Is it going to go down enough to pull the weekly over going down? That's possible. Or is the two-day going to get some acceleration crossover going up, give us a recross, and then we're going to see that weekly bounce off the red signal line and soar? We don't know. We're going to watch and see. Had a good day on Wednesday where Bitcoin jumped up, but Thursday lagging on the half-day chart. So we'll continue to watch, see what there is to see there. What about real estate? Well, real estate crossed over going up on a weekly vertical crossover back the 29th of May, the week ending then, up for two weeks after that and sort of down and sideways since then. Price percent oscillator still going up just a wee bit, not quite flat, derivative oscillator losing momentum. Go to the two-day, same thing, like Bitcoin, refusing to cross over going up. In fact, heading down. First day, the latest two-day candle down. Derivative oscillator negative. So we'll wait and see how that sorts out. Again, look at all that red on the half-day chart. We have seen it tracking down one, two, three and a half days so far. So we'll wait and just see what real estate is going to do. Think about the drag of that on the market. Now, what about oil? Oil down 0.64% for the day. I didn't tell you about real estate down 0.63%. Oil, though, we had that weekly vertical crossover at the end of last week. We have got to really zoom in on that. We have things moving up a little this week. Derivative oscillator looks like it's lost a little momentum. Price percent oscillators ever so slightly pulling away from the red signal line. Go to the two-day chart. 
We have a red uh, spinning top, indecision tending down. That's a solid red candle. That's the first day of the latest two-day candle. We'll see what oil has in store for itself. Now that's after eight days of up movement. So again, losing some energy. Maybe it's just doing what we've seen it do a little in the past. It's just sort of absorbing that up movement and getting ready to move up again. Don't know. Derivative oscillator losing momentum, but still positive. We look at the half day chart. That's where we see a lot of down movement in the morning, not as much in the afternoon, but that crossover did occur in the afternoon on the half day chart, plus the derivative oscillator went red. So we'll continue to watch, see what there is to see. Again, particularly if you jumped into that practice trade, pay close attention to the two day chart, which we're seeing some weakness on. But that weekly chart's still looking decent. So, I mean, not super strong by any means, but it's trying. That's where we are, folks, as we end the day. Always appreciate you being with us. God bless. All the best. Oh, there's a great training out that we put out today for you. Hope that you really like it. You will see it posted at the website. And, of course, the special training for all of our subscribers is Secrets for Creating Your Own Virtual Personal Wealth Fund. Only for subscribers. To be a subscriber, go to chartingwealth.com. Sign up for free. God bless. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.